Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying all the beautiful autumn colours out there. Today with that in mind, I'm really excited to show you the setup and swatching of my new autumn inspired watercolour palette. So I hope you enjoy the video and maybe even get inspired to make one of your own. As always, I will list all the watercolours I've included in the description box below, but the beauty of making your own custom palette is that you get to decide what goes in it so you definitely don't need to have the same colours as me. The palette I'm using is a fairly small fold out tin that I bought from Amazon and it also came with a big bag of empty half pans and some little round magnets. So if you want to fit even more half pans into the tin you can easily remove the tray, stick the magnets onto the bottom of your half pans and they will stay securely in place. With this tin though you can actually fit another row in sideways down the middle here so I'm going to save the magnets for another time. For the watercolours I've tried to include a bit of a mixture, with my main aim being to keep it bright while still giving me the option to mix my own colours. I also wanted to include some moody granulating colours for adding shadows and texture, as I've been having a lot of fun with those lately. Most of the watercolours are ones I already had, but there are a few new ones that I'm looking forward to sharing with you too. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you the colours in groups and I've already written the colour on each pan using a permanent marker. So these first five watercolours are the colours that immediately spring to mind when I think of autumn here in the UK. And this first one is Aureole and Yellow by Winsor & Newton. I'll just give you the name and brand of each colour for now, but I'll go into more detail and tell you why I chose each colour when we get on to the swatching. Next I have Transparent Orange, also by Winsor & Newton. I've used this one a lot, but there's just enough left in here to fill one last half pan. For my red, I chose Cadmium Red Deep, another Winsor & Newton colour. And finally in this group I've got two browns, Winsor & Newton's Burnt Sienna, and Van Dyke Brown from Core. I do have one more watercolour that would fit into this group, but that one, along with a few others, was bought pre-filled, so I'll mention them together in a group of their own. Moving on to the greens next, and after a lot of deliberation, I settled on three. Starting with Winsor & Newton's Sap Green. This second green is Sennelier's Forest Green. And for a super dark green, I decided to go with Mission Gold's Shadow Green. I deliberated a lot over this next group of pink and violet shades too, but in the end went for three watercolours from three different brands. This first one is Winsor & Newton's Perylene Violet. I also couldn't resist Sennelier's Permanent Magenta. And lastly in this group, a colour that actually required no deliberation at all, Rose Madder. This one is from Mission Gold. I picked just one blue for this palette, which is Winsor & Newton's French Ultramarine, and I also decided to include Sennelier's Payne's Grey. And a quick tip for filling pans neatly is try and direct your tubes towards the corners. I also like to give my pan a firm tap onto my table just to make sure there's no air bubbles and to get a nice even fill. Now I mentioned that I also had a few pre-fill pans that I wanted to include in this palette. So in this last group I've included three Roman Schmall colours and one by Daniel Smith. This first colour is Roman Schmall's Natural Sienna Light, which I thought would be a really useful colour for painting autumn leaves. I think I swatched it out in my last art haul video. This next colour is called Hematite Violet Shade and was actually recommended by a viewer. 
It's new to me, so I'm really excited to swatch it out for you. It also matches up nicely to this deep dark red coloured leaf. Now the final Roman Schmall colour is another new one to me and it's called Vivianite or Blue Ochre. It's a really interesting one, but before I begin swatching all these out, I have one last watercolour I want to include in my palette, which is Sodalite Genuine by Daniel Smith. This was one of the colours from the small blues palette I had, and I'm glad to give it a new home as part of this palette. OK, so this is what the palette looks like now I've filled all the pans and arranged them in my tin. They've also been left to dry for a couple of days. So let's get and swatch them out. Inspired by my autumn leaf collection, I thought it would be fun to use an oak leaf shape for my swatches. So I drew one out on a scrap piece of card and used it as a template to draw around. This is totally unnecessary, but I thought it would make a fun change. Anyway, the first colour is this beautiful transparent aurelian, pigment PY40, which is a lovely golden yellow that I thought would be good either on its own or for mixing with other colours on my palette. It is a staining colour, so it will be ideal either as a first layer or to use as a glaze to give my paintings a bright warm glow. Next is Roman Schmall's Natural Sienna Light, pigment PY43. This is a perfect colour for an autumn palette and unlike most of my more opaque yellow ochres, is semi-transparent. It also has a bit of granulation which I like for adding a bit of texture. Roman Schmall only makes full pan sized watercolours, which does limit how many colours you can fit into your palette, but I think this one is worth sacrificing a bit of space for. I chose Winsor & Newton's Transparent Orange just because I love how bright, clean and vibrant it is. It's super pigmented and personally I think no autumn palette would be complete without a bright orange of some sort. I did think about using Roman Schmall's Ben's Midazole Orange from my last art haul video, but decided to go with this more transparent version that takes up less space in my palette. For my red, I went for Winsor & Newton's Cadmium Red Deep, pigment PR108, which I wasn't sure about for a while as it's an opaque watercolour, but I wanted more of a blue toned red than one which leaned more towards orange, and this was one I already had in my collection. It is a super rich single pigment colour that can be softened out with water. I was thinking of brightly coloured toadstools when I picked this colour, but I can also mix it with a bit of orange or yellow on my palette to achieve a more orange red if I need to. I'm going to speed this up a bit now and swatch out the two browns in this palette. First is a staple in my regular palette, Burnt Sienna, pigment PR101. This warm brown I think is well suited to this autumn palette and is also a good mixing colour for neutral greys when mixed with ultramarine blue. It also mixes well with sap green to make a nice natural earthy olive green. I also wanted a darker brown in my set just for convenience and I've chosen Kors Van Dyke Brown which is a lovely transparent colour containing the same pigment PR101. And the thing I love about Kors watercolours is how they flow so beautifully across the paper. Moving on to the greens next and Winsor & Newton's Sap Green, containing pigment PG36 and PY110. This is another bright and transparent colour that I included because I love it and for convenience. It can be used on its own or in mixes with other colours. It makes a beautiful bright and clean almost may green when mixed with the aurelian 
and create some interesting neutral shades when mixed with magenta. Next is Sennelier's Forest Green and this semi-opaque watercolour really packs a punch. It contains three pigments, PBK7, PG7 and PY42. And despite the yellow pigment in it, it looks more of a blue-green to me. I included this one because it's so intense and provides a huge range of values just on its own. Snellier watercolours are also formulated with honey, so it flows beautifully across the surface of the paper. You can also get some really interesting effects just by dropping in water and paint, as you can see here. Now this next green is another dark one, but it's a bit more on the moody side. This is Mission Gold Shadow Green, and like the forest green, contains PG7 and PBK7. There's no yellow in this one though. It's semi-transparent and semi-staining, and I chose it, as the name suggests, to add in darker shadows. When mixed with the perylene violet, it also makes a really interesting black. I did think about using perylene green instead here, but much as I love my perylene green, it does have a big drying shift, meaning it dries a lot lighter. So I'm going to give this one a go and see how I get on. Now, if you haven't been excited by any of my colour choices so far, this one might just hit the spot. Daniel Smith's Sodalite Genuine is, in my opinion, something else. From their Primatech range, it's made with authentic mineral pigments, and it's just beautiful. It's heavily granulating, so perfect for adding texture to autumn landscapes or skies maybe, and I can't wait to experiment with mixing it with other colours in this palette. Let me know of any colour mixes you've tried with this Sodalite Genuine and drop me a comment in the box below. Anyway, Ultramarine Blue by Winsor & Newton containing PB29 is the main blue in this palette and I included it for a bright pop of colour and because I use it a lot to mix with. Next up is Payne's Grey. And this is another Sennelier watercolour. It contains pigments PB19, PB15 colon 1 and PBK7. I deliberated for quite a while over this one as I thought about going with either indigo or neutral tint instead. In the end though I chose the grey as I thought it would offer more flexibility. With the grey for example I can mix my own indigo just by mixing in a bit of ultramarine blue so I think it'll work quite well. It's also super pigmented, and like the Sennelier Forest Green, offers a wide range of values just by adding water. We're on to the home stretch now, and I've been really looking forward to showing you this next one. This is Roman Schmall's Hematite Violet Shade, containing pigment PR102. It is highly granulating, opaque and staining, and a little goes a long way. But just look at that rich dark colour. I just couldn't resist including this full pan in my palette, and immediately think of tree bark and branches. It's absolutely stunning, and really inspires me to paint. Now I may not have included perylene green in this palette, but I did include Winsor & Newton's perylene violet, containing pigment PV29. This transparent deep dark wine colour will be perfect for giving a subtle autumn feel to any painting, and I'm also thinking it will be useful to use alongside my browns to add interest and shadows to animal fur. Sennelier's Permanent Magenta is next, containing pigment PV19. I wasn't sure whether to go with this or Windsor Violet here, but I went with this as you can actually mix a really lovely violet just by adding a bit of ultramarine blue. Mix Permanent Magenta with Sodalite Genuine and you'll also get a beautiful granulating mauve, so I think it'll be fun to play around with.
I came up with the idea for this next colour after reading a new book I bought called Making Colours Sing by Jean Dobie. I haven't had time to read much of it yet, but Rose Madder Genuine was mentioned a lot as being a great transparent mixing colour. The closest I have in my collection is this Mission Gold's Rose Madder, containing pigment PR176. I couldn't find what the difference between my Rose Madder and Rose Madder Genuine is, so if you know, please drop me a comment below this video. Nevertheless, I have included it in this palette, so I can experiment more with its colour mixing capabilities as I continue to learn and read more about it in my book. So the final swatch is this rather interesting colour Vivianite or Blue Ochre from Roman Schmall. It's one of their earth pigments so it doesn't have pigment numbers and it's quite a muted colour compared to some of the other colours in this palette. But I wanted to include it to add a bit of balance. I'm thinking it might provide a subtle background to some of my animal paintings or have a place in toning down some of the brighter colours I've chosen. Either way, it's nice to add something a bit different to the mix and see where it takes me. So here's the swatchy all finished. The lighter areas on each leaf are where I use the damp brush to gently disturb the pigment and try and lift each of the watercolours from the paper. How staining a pigment is, is useful to know when planning a painting and it does vary a bit depending on the paper you use, but it gives you a rough idea. I also went ahead and added all the pigment information for each colour and this space on each leaf too. Lastly, I made a little swatch card to fit inside the tin and took the advice from another viewer who suggested laminating it. So thank you for the tip. Now it's waterproof and wipe clean. Putting this palette together was a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to trying it out and seeing what I can come up with. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and comment and please consider subscribing if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.